All right, well, the kids are back in school and I'm finally back in the shop without any interruptions. Whenever there's decent waves, my kids will come out to the barn and, and think that I can take off work just because I work from home. But, um, and sometimes I do, if the waves are really good, I'll take them because life is short and, and uh, you know, you remember those moments. But it's good just to have them in their routine. Now I can get back in my routine. So I was up in Vermont for about two weeks so I'm a little bit out of touch because where I'm in Vermont, there's no internet access. You have to go into town to get on the internet and there's barely any cell phone service. So it was just kind of out of touch. So I wanted to answer a couple of the, the comments, uh, basically about the boxing out the fan and then I'll talk a little bit about the motorcycle trip. And uh, so let's just go ahead and, and walk over to the fan and I'll talk a little bit about that. So there are mainly only two questions about the fan project and one was why the door and that's basically just because it'll be cold here in New Jersey soon and I want to be able to close the door and keep the cold air out of the shop. The other question, and I thought that a lot of people would have this question, is why filter the air if it's just going outside? Well, if I'm making a lot of sawdust or wood dust, I'll probably remove the filter and just let the dust go out. But a lot of what I do are make these little white frames. And I want to be able to spray them on this little rotating table here, but I don't want any of the overspray to go outside and hit the uh, side of the barn. I don't want that overspray on the side of the barn. So that's the main reason for this filter, and, and I think that it will work great. I'll prob probably be using this by the end of the week. So I am really excited to have a fan in the shop now. It's really easy to just hit the switch and have the fan go on. And also, uh, I guess the question was, where's the air coming from? I have a window on that side of the shop, so I just crack that window, and then I get a nice flow of air. So now a few motorcycle questions, and then I'll talk about these benches, which are going to be Friday's project. Uh, the motorcycle trip, that's just something I do with my brother every year. Usually I go to Ohio. This year I was doing a decent amount of work to my house up in Vermont, and he ended up meeting me towards the tail end of that trip. And I didn't make video of the work on the house because it really keeps you from getting a lot of work done when you're trying to make video of a project, at least it does for me. And so uh, he came up, I barely ride a motorcycle, I probably ride once a year, but I rode a lot when I was a kid. Jim, he rides Enduros, I think he's doing a 100 mile Enduro, it's not really a race, although I guess it's a race, but he's not competing to win it. Um, but he rides hard and he rides good and all of his friends ride. So uh, the, the motorcycle that I used of his, uh, was the KTM 530 with an auto clutch. And so you still use the clutch when you're riding regular. Um, where I found it to be a, a real help is when you're going down a really steep hill because for the most part you're letting the engine slow you down. So you'll keep the bike in first gear and that basically slows you down the wheel doesn't lock up. That being said though, if you hit the back brake and lock up the back wheel, and you've got an auto clutch, the bike won't stall. And I know that because we switched bikes at one point and I kind of forgot, and sure enough, I just stalled his bike right away going down a hill. So it makes it a lot easier. And in the comments, a couple of people were laughing about the fact that I was using an auto clutch, but geez, it's, um, it's nice, it's worth it. And I think there was another question about, uh, what did I use for the video? It's a GoPro and there's just a little helmet mount on the, um, on the top of my helmet. And uh, the river that we were fishing in was the third branch of the White River. And we were up in central Vermont near Randolph and Bethel and Braintree. So these benches were made just about 15 years ago. And I know that because I signed and dated the benches. And that's a good habit to get into. If you're making things, go out and buy one of those uh, little burning pens. Because uh, you'll be surprised at how fast time goes by when you're making things. It's hard for me to believe that these were made 15 years ago. And uh, I, actually my video on Friday is going to uh, be about how I'm going to refinish. I'm not so much refinish because I'm not taking the old finish off, but how I'm gonna spruce this old piece of furniture up. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna talk about some of the things that were done with this piece of furniture as far as the joinery, the finish, uh, the seat. This is two pieces for the white oak seat. I'm really happy with the way everything is held up over the years, so I thought it'd be worth making a video about. Uh, I am doing a lot more paintings, and I just added a new painting to my eBay auctions, 
and I'm adding new things to my website every day now. So let's go upstairs. I want to show you what this week's auction is and also answer a framing question. This is the painting that's at auction this week. It's a painting of Sandy Hook and it's in a white frame. Now the other day I got an email from somebody saying they liked a particular painting but they would have rather have it in a wood frame. And if you're looking at one of the paintings and thinking about bidding or buying from my site, just send me an email because for the most part, these paintings are designed to pop out of one frame and into another. So you can see that was just in the white frame, now it's in the wood frame. So if you'd like to buy a painting and you just want it in a different frame, send me an email. I'll respond and let you know that I got your email and I'll make sure it's in the right frame before I send it out. So uh, thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you on Friday.